Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're going to show you everything you need to know to create a fog effect in Photoshop. We're going to show you how to create a custom brush which is going to help give the fog some definition and even how to create light rays through the fog. You'll also learn how to use depth in your photos to add more realistic fog as your image gets farther away from the camera. Here we are in Photoshop. The image on the left is where we want to add our fog and this image on the right is just a picture of a cloud we're going to turn into a fog brush. So let's go ahead and start here. Now the thing I need to do is extract this cloud from the background and I'm going to use channels to do so. So let's go to channels. You can also go to window and down here to channels. There we go. I'm going to select my red channel, and duplicate that by clicking on the plus icon there. And then I'm going to hit control or command L for my levels and I'm going to simply bring up my black point. And there we go. And you can see this allows me to just make the uh, cloud white and the background's going to be black. Now I'm just going to use a regular old soft brush here. Let's just choose a regular soft brush. And we're going to paint with black right here on the bottom. I'm going to change my mode from normal down to overlay of my brush. There we go. And this is just going to kind of allow me to only have the cloud in the middle visible. There we go, because I know I want a nice outline for the shape of the cloud. There we go. And that looks really, really nice. So if you don't want to do this on your own, no worries. You can actually download all of these sample images on flurn.com as well as the custom brush that I'm making right now. And you can do that following the link right down below. All right, let's go ahead and paint white here in the center. Again, my brush mode is set to overlay. There we go, that looks fantastic. And that's gonna be basically the stamp of our fog. So what we need to do now is turn this into a selection. We're gonna hold Control or Command and click here on my layer, which is gonna turn the light part into a selection. So let's go back over here to my layers. There we go, and now I just need to fill this with black. So I'm gonna create a new layer. We're gonna to go to Edit, and I'm gonna go down to Fill, and we're just gonna choose our color as black. Fantastic. And then I just need a white background. So I'm gonna grab my uh, a solid color fill layer. Let's go all the way to white. I'm going to put that right underneath. So this is what we want. Surprisingly, this is like perfect for our cloud slash fog brush. The brush itself is actually going to be in this exact shape. So the next thing we need to do, we're going to select all by hitting control command A, and we're going to go to edit and then down here to define brush preset. There we go. And we're just going to call this cloud temp, okay, for template. There we go. Now let's go ahead and switch to our other image. We're gonna hit F for full screen. I'm gonna create a new layer and we're just gonna make our brush a little bit smaller and I'm gonna go ahead and choose red so we can see what we're doing. Now, if I go ahead and start painting around with this brush as is, you can see it doesn't look realistic at all. This is not what we want. So let's go ahead into our brush settings and start to edit this a little bit. We're gonna go to window and then down to brush settings. Fantastic. Now here in my shape dynamics, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my size jitter all the way up. That's gonna make some of these larger and some of them smaller. And I'm gonna go ahead and just see what that looks like. Okay, not there yet. Let's turn our angle jitter all the way up. That's gonna rotate each one of these. Okay, looking a little bit more random. That's looking a little bit better. We're gonna flip the X and the Y jitter, looking good. All right, again, a little bit more random. I want these to be a little further spaced apart. So we're gonna go to a brush tip shape and we're just gonna space them a little farther. There we go, something like that looks pretty good. Next, let's go ahead and turn on scattering. So we're gonna scatter on both axes, something like that. All right, maybe a little bit less scattering. Okay, now we're starting to look good, but it still doesn't look that realistic. Let's go ahead and turn on transfer here, okay? And then what we wanna do here is turn on our flow jitter. Now, I'm gonna use my pressure sensitive tablet and have this control set to pen pressure. So if I don't press very hard, it's just not gonna put a lot of fog down. You, it's red right now, but you can imagine if it was white, okay? Now, if you don't have a pressure sensitive tablet, that's totally okay. You'll just turn the pressure to off. I'll just use my mouse so you can see how this works. And we'll just turn the, turn the flow jitter up. And then we wanna go ahead and make sure we lower the flow on our actual brush, okay? Something around 10%. All right, in this case, we'll do 5%. I'm gonna continue here with my mouse just for a second because I'm just gonna kinda of assume that a lot of you guys don't have these pressure sensitive tablets and I don't want you to feel left out. Okay, so this is actually starting to look pretty good, right? We're gonna zoom out here and see, yeah, this is starting to look like fog and you can see I can make my brush larger or smaller. 
So now let's go ahead and save out my brush. We're just gonna go to our little settings here. I'm gonna go to new brush preset, and we're gonna call this Flurn Fog. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and capture the brush size there. So let's hit okay there. Fantastic. Now, all we need to do is start painting with white, right? Because before it was red, it didn't look that realistic. So let's go ahead and start painting with white. And we can see now we're starting to get some realistic fog in our image. It's a regular brush, so you can make it larger if you want, larger fog. There we go, look at that, it's looking pretty good. You can make it smaller if you wanna do little bitty fog <laughs> and just kinda of have fun. Now, my suggestion here, let's go ahead and clear that layer, is to go ahead and start with your large fog there, just start painting it in the background, and there we go, that's starting to look really good. Now, the next layer of adding realistic fog to your image is, okay, this fog is a little bit too well-defined, as you can see, but that's not a big deal. You do want some definition in fog. You don't want it to just be a blur, but this is a little bit too much. So let's go ahead and just give this a little bit of blur. We'll go to Filter, Blur, and to Gaussian Blur, and you just want to blur it a little bit. You don't you don't want to like have sharp edges like this, but you don't want it to just be a blob either. You want somewhere kind of like right in between where you see some definition. See that? It looks like it has volume and it has a little bit of shape. We'll blur it a little bit more, but you can see it still looks like fog. Now, the next thing that helps make fog look realistic is that we're not gonna have a lot of fog for the things that are close to the camera, but things that are farther from the camera are gonna have more fog. So we need a way to select things that are close to the camera and mask them out of our fog. And we can actually do that by selecting focal range in Photoshop. So we can do that, we're gonna go to select and then down here to focus area. Now this actually allows us to select the things that are in focus in the image. You can see, just make sure you have that little preview button checked. And I can even change my in focus area. That's looking pretty good. That's a pretty good start. So you can see the car got selected, my subject got selected. That's pretty good so far. I'm gonna have this output to a new layer with a layer mask. And let's go ahead and click on this select and mask. That's gonna allow me to refine some of these edges. So we're gonna use our refine edge brush tool here. And I'm just gonna go here and refine some of the hair, try to make this selection a little bit nicer here. There we go. Fantastic. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. Obviously the nicer this year's selections, uh, if you're gonna have you know a, a lot of fog interaction with your subject, you wanna maybe spend a little bit more time on these selections. You could even use the pen tool and cut out your subject if you want. But in for our purposes, this is gonna be totally okay. Let's go ahead and just fade that out a little bit more there. So we have kind of a realistic effect going from fog to no fog. All right, fantastic. That looks pretty good. Now we're gonna hit okay. Taking a look at this, here's our new layer with the layer mask, looks pretty good. I'm gonna hold alt or option and take a look at the layer mask. And uh, it just didn't do the top where I wanted it. That's not a big deal. We're just gonna use our lasso tool. I'm gonna make a selection around there, hit shift delete, and we're just gonna fill that with black. So now what we have is basically a perfect layer mask for depth in our image. I can just copy this layer mask from that to my fog layer. Let's just double click and call this fog01. So I'm gonna hold alt or option and click and drag this. You're gonna see it's got, I've got a double arrow there and that's gonna allow me to copy my layer mask from one layer to another. So let's go ahead and do that. It's gonna copy it to one layer or right to the fog layer. And then you're gonna see it's actually the opposite of what we want. If that's ever the case with your layer mask, go ahead and click on your layer mask and hit control or command I to invert it. Check that out. Now we have fog behind our subject. That looks really good. Now, in this case, the edge is like not that great. So what we wanna do, I'm just gonna go in here with my brush tool and just kind of clean this up. You can just use a regular brush for this. All right, there we go. We're just gonna kind of clean this up. I just don't want it to look like all jaggedy and stuff like that. That doesn't look very realistic. So just going in here and kind of fixing this up with my brush tool. Now. Obviously, we're doing this like the relatively quick way. If you had a little bit more time on your hands, you could go in here, maybe use a pen tool to select out your subject and things like that. But most of the cases, I don't think it's really necessary. That select focus area actually works really, really well. You can see here, I'm real happy with these effects. There we go. Just a little bit of cleanup with our brush tool and we're good to go. There we go. 
Yeah, I'm really happy with that. And by the way, you can download all the assets, including this PSD, as well as this fog brush on florin.com. Just follow the link right down below. Now, there's one more thing that I wanna add to this image, and that's some light rays going through the fog. This is actually really fun and easy to do. So what we're gonna do is create a new layer, and I'm just gonna grab a levels adjustment, okay? So we're gonna go to levels. I'm gonna take my dark point, and we're gonna bring this way up, something like this starting to look good. Okay, now on my layer mask, I'm gonna hit Control or Command I to invert this. And then what I wanna do is just create some like white little streaks here. And I'm gonna make these different sizes. There we go, just going left to the right there. Okay, so different sizes. What I'm doing is trying to create some like natural variation in, there we go, in what would be basically the different shapes of light that's passing through the trees. You can see here below, we have some light that's kind of streaming from right to left. So I wanna kind of recreate that with this little, you know, <laughs> with these little brush strokes here. All right, you can do this, you don't have to be real fancy. Uh, I'm putting a little bit more on the right-hand side because it's I want it to be lighter than the left-hand side. Okay, now here on our layer mask, I'm gonna go to filter, we're gonna go to blur, and I'm gonna go to motion blur. And we're just gonna blur this left and right with a distance of 2000 pixels. You can see if I go less, it's just less of a blur. The more I blur it, there we go. That looks pretty good. Let's just do that again. I'm just gonna paint a little bit more here. Fantastic. You're gonna be surprised at how good this looks in a second. You just wanna make sure to use different sizes of brushes to get like little bits of different uh, artifacts and different light rays. Let's do it again, filter, blur and motion blur. And we're just gonna do this again right here at about 2000 pixels. Hit okay. All right, so now we've basically got fog uh, or like light rays coming from the right to the left, uh, but they don't look great yet because they're all just kind of going horizontally. So on our layer mask itself, we're gonna hit control or command T for our transform. Now I'm gonna hold control or command and click on these corners and drag them out. Check this out. As I drag these corners out, and you can even like go really big with this, right? As I drag these corners out, you can see I'm able to create light rays and do this in the same direction as the light rays in my image. So I'm able to create like a really nice realistic effect for these light rays. That looks really good. All right, now, if you want it to be a little bit less uh, well-defined, no big deal. All you have to do is add a little bit of blur. So we're gonna go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. There we go. And that looks really good there. Now, again, <laughs> check this out. If I want this to just be visible behind my subject, I can do that because I've already got my layer mask. So this layer, I'm just gonna group it with itself. And then I'm gonna copy this layer mask from my fog group onto the group with the light rays. So we're just gonna call this light rays. There we go. And I'm gonna hold Alt or Option to click and drag from one layer to the group itself. And then check this out. We actually don't need this background copy anymore. So we're gonna delete that. Check this out. Now I've got these light rays or fog rays right behind our subject. And I can go in here because this is a levels adjustment layer. I can just adjust the visibility of these at any time. How cool is that? And maybe I want these to be a little bit more blurred. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer. We're just gonna put this right here for now. because so I'm gonna put some in front of my subject too. I want these to be blurred because they're behind my subject and you can see it goes out of focus. So we're just gonna add a Gaussian blur. There we go. And as you can see, the more I give this a blur, the more we have a little bit like out of focus effect for these light rays. Ah, that looks so good. And then I can have this in the front as well. Okay, and I can even go in here and use a levels adjustment on this layer. And look at this, I can kind of make it a little bit stronger of an effect if I want. I can use like more, uh, here we go. Instead of having so much light rays, I can just like have fewer and more sparse light rays. Fantastic, well, let's go ahead and put that on top of everything. There we go. And then this one, I really only want to be visible uh, here in the front of my image and we're only just gonna do this just a little bit. So let's go ahead and group that. I'm gonna put a black layer mask on the group and then we're just gonna put this on a couple areas like right here in the front of my subject. Fantastic, there we go. And let's go ahead lower the opacity for that. All right, and make it look like my subject is blocking some of those light rays. How cool is that? 
So there we have our fog effect. This is such a cool effect. Let's go ahead and just show the original image. We used select and then down to select focus area to cut out our subject. Then we used our fog brush and painted that area in right behind our subject. And then we've got a couple of layers of light rays. Let's go, go ahead and group those together and call those light rays. Let me know what you guys think of this tutorial. We've got more coming up for you. If you wanna get a free tutorial every single week, hit that subscribe button right down below. Thanks again, I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.